Hello, everybody. How are you doing? It's been long time since the last video. I am so sorry for keeping you wait, and thank you very much for your patience. Hope you've been great. Since the videos are posted irregularly, I would recommend you to subscribe and also press the ring button so that you get notification immediately when the new video comes online. The video which was watched the most in my channel so far is about Hanya. On that video, we could see how strong emotion of women turn into evil Hanya. But does it only happen to women? What kind of emotion and background can turn a man into a demon? And what was that demon look like? Today, I will tell you a scary and very unique story. It is about one of the three great grudge spirits of Japan, the emperor who became evil Tengu. Yes, it is about the emperor of Japan today. What is your impression about Imperial House of Japan? The Japanese imperial family dates back to 660 BC and is the oldest continuous hereditary monarchy in the world today. Having been in existence for about 2,700 years, one family, the Danish monarchy is about 1,000 to 1,200 years old and the third oldest, the British monarchy, came to power 1,000 years ago so you can see how long the history of the Japan Emperor is. After World War II, the Emperor became the symbol of Japan, but without any political power. Still, Japanese people respect him a lot. Naruhito is the current Emperor of Japan since 1st of May 2019. He is the 126th Emperor in an uninterrupted family line. I would like to talk about 17th Emperor. Sutoku Emperor Sutoku was born in 1119 as the first son of Emperor Toba. His own grandfather, Emperor Shirakawa, forced Emperor Toba, who was only 20 years old at the time, to relinquish the position and installed young Sutoku as Emperor. Sutoku was only 3 years and 7 months old then. Back then during the Heian period, the imperial family was the, at the center of politics. But three years old emperor was of course not capable of running the country. And the real power is in the hands of the regent, a system we called Insei, which means power was wielded by the emperor's father or grandfather. Sutoku himself was at first not interested in politics, but became passionate about waka poetry his delicate and beautiful waka poetries are still loved by many, many people today, and his sensitive personality can be felt. Sounds peaceful, but his life was rather complicated and unhappy. From accumulated resentment to darkness, Stoku was born with misfortune. The misfortune was that his father Toba thoroughly disliked him. Oh, why? Toba called Sutoku uncle child and very much distrusted of him. That word means that Sutoku's father was not Emperor Toba, but Shirakawa, his own grandfather. Yes, great grandfather Shirakawa, who was in power at the time, had been very close to his grandson's wife. Rumor had it the child born as a result was Sutoku. From the perspective of Toba, that was rather complicated situation as his own child was also his uncle. Grandfather Shirakawa died only a few years later. Toba became regent and treated the emperor Sutoku with much more cruelty from then on. Toba also had another son with his second wife a child called Prince Narihito, and he wanted to him to be emperor, not Sutoku, who wasn't even his own son. He forced Emperor Sutoku to adopt his three years old stepbrother Narihito, who then became the 76th emperor of Japan. Sutoku himself was now Emperor Emeritus, or Grand Emperor. But who now held the real power? Surely not baby boy Narihito. So according to Insei's system, 
22 years old Sutoku, who became adopted father. We had difficult times, but my father gave me an opportunity to handle the country now. I am grateful to feel his fatherly love. He thought so at first, but his father, Toba, was shrewd. Toba had changed the adopted paper secretly, which now stated Naruhito and Sutoku were not father and son, but still brothers. Father, do you hate me that much? Stoku exclaimed. The hate for each other lasted until 1156, when Toba refused seeing Sutoku on his deathbed. With Toba died and 17 year old Narihito following him to his grave shortly after, a debate over the successor to the 176 emperor was raging. But again, Sutoku was forced out. And his younger brother, Emperor Goshirakawa, took his place. Toba father despised his own son because he wasn't his own. And now Sutoku's brother, Goshirakawa, hated him because he's not real brother. So much trouble in this family. And it got worse. Grand Emperor Sutoku is trying to start a rebellion. Rumor spread it quickly. It would be understandable as he was cheated of the throne once again. Was it all too much for sensitive Sutoku, or was this rumor not even true? Sutoku and Goshirakawa certainly hated each other, and fighting began. The war between the imperial brothers, the Hogan Rebellion, was over quickly. Sutoku never stood a chance, was completely defeated, and banished from Kyoto. And exiled to Sanuki province. It was the first time in 400 years that an exile was imposed on a former emperor, and the severity of the punishment was unprecedented. Former Grand Emperor Sutoku was treated as roughly as a prisoner when he was escorted away. Thus, living under house arrest in Sanuki province, Grand Emperor Sutoku became a strict follower of Buddhism. And devoted himself daily to writing letters of thanksgiving. I like to think maybe he was reflecting his life and tried to comfort the spirits of the soldiers who lost their lives in the senseless war of a power. After three years of work, he completed a manuscript that contained his wish for the pure land of ultimate bliss. He sent the manuscript to the imperial court. And asked them to deliver it to a temple in Kyoto to make offering to the dead of war. However, Emperor Goshirakawa refused to take the humble request. Instead, he had a manuscript sent back to him saying, Sutoku intends to put a curse on me with this book. In the face of the returned manuscripts, the heart of Sutoku finally fell into darkness. His body trembled with anger. And the resentment that had been building up by his continued explosion exploded. Japanese people can suffer silently a lot and for a long time, but eventually we explode and go crazy. Emperor Sutoku bit his tongue vigorously, and with his own blood that flowed from his tongue, he added this inscription to the manuscript. I shall become the great Sutton of Japan, and I will make the emperors fall to the commoners and let the commoners replace the emperors. Ware, Nihonkoku no daimaen to nari, ko o motte tami to shi, tami o ko to nasan. This is Sutoku's curse, a curse so powerful. That it is continued to haunt the imperial family until today. It is said that the hair and nails of the enraged Emperor Sutok continued to grow, and he became Tengu. Why not Oni? Because he is a noble person, so that he became Tengu, the higher-ranked version of evil demon. If you check the video about Tengu, you could understand more. Never-ending curse of Emperor Sutok. 
until his death at the age of 46, Emperor Sutoku was unable to return to his hometown of Kyoto. It is said that the body of Emperor Sutoku, who held a grudge against the imperial court, still looked as if he were alive. Emperor Goshirakawa, on the other hand, ignored the death of Sutoku and refused to mourn his brother. And then things at the imperial court suddenly turned dark. People related to the emperor, including empress, lost their lives, one after the other. Rumors began to circulate. It must be the curse of Emperor Sutoku. The following year, a large fire broke out in the capital city, Heian-kyo. The flames quickly flared up and engulfed the imperial palace. In the end, one third of the capital turned into ashes. The curse of Sutoku was not fulfilled yet though. One by one, those who sided with Goshirakawa in the former war were driven to their deaths too. And slowly it dawned on him that it must be true, and he repented. Goshirakawa had a mausoleum built on the former battlefield to appease Sutoku's soul and to worship his spirit. Would that be enough to turn around the evil curse? Goshirakawa's response was too late. The curse that Sutoku cast on the imperial family knew no bounds. What he had written in his own blood was no less than the destruction of Japanese imperial system. I will make the emperors fall to the commoners and let the commoners replace the emperors. And thus it had to happen. Japan changed completely. The establishment of samurai-centered Kamakura shogunate took politics completely out of the emperor's hands. The emperor had to step down from his authority to a merely ceremonial position, and the people, in the form of samurai warriors and their warlords, the shogun, took the real power in Japan for a long time to come. Do you think that the haunting of Stoku is a story from long ago? No one cares now? In Japan, tradition runs deep and we have long memories. Even after Goshirakawa's death from illness, the presence of Sutoku has continued to haunt the emperor's family for hundreds of years, and everybody in Japan knows about his presence. You may think it was a long time ago, but the day before Emperor Meiji took office in 1867, he brought the spirit back to Kyoto, apologized, and asked that his power be used for the sake of peace in Japan, thus ending a 700-year-long samurai era that had begun due to a grudge against Emperor Sutoku. There was no more horror stories after this, but still, another hundred years later, in 1964, on the occasion of the 800th anniversary of the death of Sutoku, Emperor Showa dispatched an imperial envoy to the mausoleum in Shikoku to expose the spirit of him. Emperor Sutoku lived an unhappy life, and his grief and anger continued to cover Japan after nearly 1,000 years. Even then, think about it, now the emperor has no political power, it is the people who rule in Japan as a democracy. Poet Stock wrote, Seo hayami, iwa ni sekaruru takigawa no, warete mo sue ni awan tozo mo. It means, just as the water of a swiftly flowing river, when it hits a rock and separates into two, but becomes one again. I hope to see you again one day, even though we are now separated. It is often explained as romantic poem about separated lovers. But for me, it is like an agony-filled scream for love towards his father, brother, and family. Do you think Sutoku was a mad person? Was he cursed by his birth? or the experience he had to go through? Or was he just naive? Where did the vengeance come from that made him turn Tengu? Please let me know in the comment. I always enjoy and appreciate your comments and I reply every single one. Thank you very much for watching today and have a nice day and evening. Bye! Mata ne!